All right, guys, we're back at it. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Today, we are going to talk about Tesla's track mode, a quick first impressions video for track mode. You see me lined up here against the 911 Turbo, as well as this AMG GTC, uh, as well as a BMW as well. We're going to talk about track mode, a quick video about what it is and how it performs. So stay tuned for that. All right, guys, so we're back. We're talking about Tesla's track mode for the Model S Plaid. We're going to jump right into it. Unfortunately, this is going to be more of our first impressions because the weather is not allowing us to get to the track and actually test out in full detail. So if you're looking for spinning donuts and to do a lot of track laps right now, we're not going to be able to do that. We're just going to give our quick first impressions on the software, some quick tips that you might not know about it, just in case you haven't gotten it yet, just to keep everybody in the know. All right, so let's just jump right into it. Talking about the release notes right here. It says, optimize your Plaid configuration for dynamic driving exclusively on closed courses and experience the unmatched performance at many different venues to enable tap controls, pedals and steering, track mode. So in the track mode, this is the performance based mode for running laps and going around a track versus the drag strip mode, which is about going very fast in the straight line, channeling the car's power to go fast in the straight line versus channeling the car's thermals to manage fast laps around the track. So thermals, it says the heat pump system cools more aggressively, maximizing powertrain endurance and performance. Enable post drive cooling to shorten the wait time between sessions. So for those that are new to Tesla or just got a Tesla or got a Plaid or whatever the case may be, previously what winds up happening is that as batteries heat up, they need time to cool off. And as they need time to cool off, it limits the power. So previously other models of the performance model S's, as they would drive around tracks in a very aggressive manner, aggr aggressive fashion, they would need to cool off and that would limit the power that it could do. So it would go into what's called limp mode or what people colloquially call limp mode where it couldn't get full performance. That's what this is going to allow it to do is going to allow it to cool down the batteries quicker so you can get back on the track as soon as possible. All right, uh, drive systems. Torque vectoring authority is increased across the three motors, elevating the vehicle's agility, cornering capabilities. The accelerator pedal allows more precise torque control and regenerative braking power is strengthened to recover more energy. Again, just making sure that's more dynamic and more nimble. One of the criticisms about the Model S is that it's heavy and it feels like a boat and it doesn't corner and turn as precise as some sports and race cars. Uh, and that may still be the case, but this is fine tuning that and allowing it to be more aggressive, uh, more agile around corners, using the power, using the features and functionality that it has at its disposal. All right. Suspension. Adaptive damping reduces vehicle motions, improving handling and promoting driver confidence. Ride height is automatically set to low. So automatically set the, the ride height to low. Again, just using everything at its disposal, the suspension, the adaptive damping, the uh, torque vectoring of the motors, uh, the handling uh, of the car itself, the thermals to, again, allow it to be able to come back and get on the track sooner rather than later. And then lastly, display. A track focus interface includes a lap timer, G-meter, real-time accelerometer, vehicle thermal monitor, dash cam video capture, vehicle telemetry capture, and offers customization options. So again, giving you the ability to customize it to make it what you want it to be. Okay, so that was one of the good things about the Model 3 performance was that it had this track mode that allowed it to take advantage of its nimble nature. It's lighter than the Model S, it's smaller than the Model S, so it took advantage of what it could do really well, which is handle uh, really well in, in tight corners uh, and then get around corners very quickly. And that's the benefit of the performance Model 3 over the straight line acceleration, brutal acceleration of the Model S and now here in the Model S Plaid. All right, so this is, again, just trying to even the playing field a little bit, allowing the Model S to be more nimble, more agile, more performant around a track multiple times over and over again with its improved thermals and improved cooling system that it has here. All right, so let's take a look at it, and we'll also point out some things that, uh, you know, you might not know about the track mode system right now. So first, we'll go to pedals and steering. 
and then we'll go into track mode. Track mode here is there. Now, first by default is disabled until you acknowledge that you can set it up the right way and acknowledge the way it needs to be uh, addressed. So first and foremost, if I click customize, it's gonna go ahead and show you what the different presets are. It comes by default with the race preset where the handling is 50-50, stability assist is at zero, regenerative braking is 100%, and then all the options are checked for post-drive cooling, brake temperature, uh, warnings, as well as uh, saving the dash cam for the lap. So as you go around a track, it'll track that and then be able to show you what what uh, what footage you have. Save the dash cam footage per lap that you go around. So you have that at your disposal. And then obviously it has a drift preset because they want people to be able to kick the kick the wheels out, kick the back end out uh, and do some some burnouts and things like that. So it turns stability assist all the way down to negative and then 100 percent rear wheel drive and then get all the settings here now. Again, we have to get on the track to be able to test that. The weather is not really conducive to that right now, so we're not going to be able to do that. But what we can do is we can start to put in some other presets. And right now I put a P85++ preset on here now because previous Teslas, what they used to do is they used to have a performance mode, a secret code that you can put in, and it would give you a performance mode. And that would basically allow, which was the plan at the time in terms of selling cars, the ability for uh, every Tesla showroom to just have performance cars and then use the performance code to assimilate what other cars drive like. So if I had, for instance, a P100D, I could assimilate every other trim of Tesla, rear wheel drive, lower power, et cetera. Uh, I could simulate what it would be like to drive those cars. So that performance mode would allow me that P100D to simulate a P90D, to uh, uh, simulate a P85, a 90D without the performance, et cetera, just by modulating the control of the motors, rear wheel drive versus dual, or dual motor, uh, full power versus different percentages of power in terms of torque uh, mapping to the throttle. So it was a very cool feature that would allow, again, Tesla to be able to upsell everybody on performance variants and then punch in the performance code to see the car that they really wanted to try to test. And this is, again, just bringing back that functionality for us to simulate um, what that P85 would look like. So now I'm taking the P85++, which was a sort of a, a mythical P85 that someone made. I forget the gentleman's name. Um, he put a, uh, a performance motor, a performance 100D motor in a, in a P85 body and gave it some extra power. So this is effectively the Plaid dual, uh, dual motors, dual rear motors, but at 100% rear wheel drive zero stability assist at zero. So it's in the middle, right in between, not too little, not too much. And then again, a hundred percent regenerative braking. And that again, gives us a complete rear wheel drive car with the performance that the P85 used to have for nostalgia's sake. So that's what we did here. And again, we can probably set this up any way we want to do it, uh, but we probably can't modulate the power. So we can't say, I want to assimilate a 100D or, you know, just a standard long range because we don't have that. We could do is put it in track mode, put it in dual motor, put it down to sport. And that would give us some kind of semblance of what a, you know, a, a standard 100D or a standard, you know, uh, long range Model S or just the Model S proper would be like. So again, just giving you some options and how you want to play with it. But when you turn this on, it actually looks for peak performance. So you can set these presets up however you want. And then when you turn it on, it actually disables the auto shift out of park functionality. So if you have auto shift out of park, it'll dis it'll override that. And you have to deliberately put the car in park and reverse because you may have some combination of stability control off or some kind of track mode preset that would allow you to get into trouble. So they want to make sure you you're acknowledging that and that you don't make the mistake of having track mode enabled and having auto shift out of park and just stop on the, the pedal and go either reverse or forward in whatever uncontrolled manner. So that's a good safety feature there. All right. So now uh, I put it in, I put it in drive, put it back in park, and now I can go to track mode and turn it on. Here's the disclaimer. Uh, it's actually supposed to be used in closed courses, not on public roads. So it says avoid doing that. And it says avoid overheating the braking system. Obviously, we know the issue with the brakes here. And then also check the tires and do all of the safety checks that you would typically do if you had to go to a track anyway. You'll be able to do that for track mode. So I turn track mode on and you have the new visuals right up here. All right. So I'll focus in on this one right here just so you guys can see new visuals right up here. You hear the, the uh, fans start to spin up. Conditioning for peak performance, 10 minutes remaining. We're in pretty cold climate. So again, it's not ideal conditions for this just because we're track, we're going to be traction limited if we were to go to a track because of how cold it is. 
Um, so it's again, not, not a real full test, but just a good overview and good first impressions. All right. So track mode enabled, you get the message down here, you get the track mode icon, you get preconditioning, you get the new visuals here. Uh, and then you also get the overriding of, uh, the auto shift out of park. So if I go ahead and try to put it in gear, auto shift out of park is disabled, is unavailable in track mode. So now I have to deliberately go forward or backwards, et cetera to go from there. So I'm going to go ahead and go in reverse, see what that looks like. Okay. And I'll go straight. Now, some people have said that, um, some people have said that the regenerative braking is more aggressive in track mode. To me, it seems l extremely less aggressive even in the preset that I have, right? So I have a preset in here right now, P85++ with regenerative braking to 100%. The, the car actually creeps and it creeps pretty aggressively. So it's not a situation where whole, it comes to a complete stop like one pedal driving, it creeps pretty aggressively. And I think that's beneficial for racing because you do want a little bit of coast to be able to carry your momentum, but you also want the region to kick in pretty aggressively for braking as well. So I'm not sure what the, what the situation is here. If anyone knows in the comments, let me know how to, how to adjust that to make it more aggressive than just 100% there. All right, so this is effectively it. It's going to wait 10 minutes, and then after 10 minutes, it's going to be active, and we'll be able to, to test it out. Again, I'm on the P85++ preset. I'm just going to go down a block. We're in a pretty closed block. I'm not going to do anything crazy. We're not on the track. We're just going to show you what the visuals look like as we drive, because what winds up happening is that these graphics are combining with everything that Tesla has graphically. So I could put it in plaid mode as well, right? So if I go back into drive... Um, I could also put it into, excuse me, drag strip mode. I can put it into drag strip mode as well. So I have drag strip mode and um, and track mode as well going on there. But what happens is if I launch this, it'll show the plaid graphic. I'm not going to launch it. Uh, but if I also just drive with FSD beta, it's also going to show me the FSD beta visuals as well. And I'm sure that, that would look cool on a, tr on a track as well. Uh, so that's pretty cool. So it's going to show you these graphics by default which are the temperatures of the battery, the motor, and the brakes. But then it's also going to show you uh, any other visuals that you may have active on the screen, which may be a bug, may not be a bug, but uh, so far it's, it's not too bad. All right, so let me switch perspectives. I'll put it back in drive and I'll take it out just to go around the block really quickly to show you what that looks like. All right, guys, I'm gonna pull out here, just go down the block, relatively closed block. I do have some lookouts for us as well, just to make sure lined up against this uh, AMG GTC, as well as this 911. Turbo S that is. As you see here, the full self-driving graphics are actually still visual here. Now I'm rear wheel drive only. It's not gonna be as much power. Some power, but not as much power as, uh, as you know, a uh, dual motor all wheel drive. But as you see here, FSD beta graphics are, are actually visual uh, and visible. And if I activate, I wonder if I could activate. See, cruise is not available. FSD is autopilot is not available. But the visuals are still there. So that's pretty cool. Um, pretty fast, but not as fast as full, you know, the full situation. We're on the block here. Regenerative braking is kicking in, but again, it's still allowing me to coast a little bit. See that coast then coming to a little bit of a stop. So I guess it needs some warm up or some ramp up time. It's still calculating for peak performance for both track mode as well as drag strip mode. Again, nothing crazy here. Cold roads, cold tires, not ideal scenarios and ideal conditions but just giving you a sense of what it's like. And it does remind me of the P85, but a lot powerful, um, a lot more powerful, just that rear wheel push as opposed to uh, the all wheel, my all wheel drive where you get the rear push and the front pull of the motor getting you up to speed. Wheel spin there on the rear wheels as well. A little bit of rear wheel spin as expected. Not gonna test the handling out here. Ice and crazy stuff on the road, not ideal conditions. And again, just showing you what the visuals look like. So you get that full self-driving 
uh, experience while using track mode, which again, should be very interesting on an actual track when we get there. Okay. Pull back in next to our 911 and our AMG. Again, regen on at low speed, it seems. Low speed is where it gets really, really uh, floaty a little bit, a little bit, uh, you know, creep like. Even backwards, I'm, I'm like just going, floating backwards. I'm not coming to a stop like I expect to. So you really got to be on your game here. All right. And it allows you to set the finish line here. So you says set the finish line for this one. Uh, so when you want to be able to identify and mark where your finish line is for whatever your track lap is, that'll be able to tell you. OK, so that's pretty much it. Uh, otherwise, a lot of things are disabled that they're not telling you about. Again, auto shift out of park is disabled. Uh, cruise control is disabled. FSD slash autopilot is also disabled. So if you have expectations of using any of that while in track mode, you won't be able to do it. Uh, and then drag strip mode is also on as well. I'm going to turn that off. Um, and then if you turn off tr uh, track mode as well, you'll start to see that uh, performance is ready. So peak performance is ready for track mode, which is a lot quicker than drag strip mode. And I've heard some people say the reverse. So I think that the battery needs to be a little cooler than warmer for track mode than it would be for uh, drag strip mode. And people in warmer climates may need to cool the battery a little bit longer, which is why they may need more time for track mode to be ready versus where they need drag strip mode to be ready. People out in Florida like Brooks and Drag Time, shout out to Brooks, did a great overview of uh, track mode. Check his video out, I'll link it below. Uh, but he had a longer time, longer wait time in Vegas uh, that was uh, to get the battery ready for track mode than it would in uh, drag strip mode. So I think it's reversed for us because it's colder up here, quicker to get to, to track mode, longer to get to drag strip mode at these temperatures. All right, so it's really just gonna depend on where you are. Uh, but let me know your thoughts in the comments. Let me know what you think about track mode, what you like about it, what you don't like about it. If you had a Model 3, what you think about it, how it compares to that if you now have a Model S. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Until the next time, enjoy your day. Enjoy your Tesla.